There are many things I love about this railway, and here's one of them. Sat here at Rockley, quiet, the atmosphere is fantastic. Add a train into the mix and it adds a little extra magic. Come and experience it for yourself. Join us on our dining train, the Watercrest Bell, or the Real L train. But it is something quite special and does recreate the feel of how railways used to be. And on that line, last week, Manston hauled our shuttle service, working from Rockley down to Wolfsford. Just one coach and a BY van. And from the outset, it does seem a little strange. Quite a powerful locomotive hauling quite a light train. And it was out mainly because it was going to be hauling the water spell in the evening. So if you've got an engine in steam, you might as well use it. But when you go back in time, it did fit for look perfectly for one train. The Atlantic Coast Express. Where other companies would have different name trains on it. The Cheltenham Flyer, boat trains like the Cunarda. The ACE was something rather special indeed. So the Atlantic Coast Express was the crack express to the West Country, for the, so it was introduced I think by the Southern Railway about 1926, ran from Waterloo Station, left at 11 o'clock uh, for the West of England, first stop Salisbury, uh, and it was normally made up sort of 12, 13, 14 coaches, uh, but an awful lot of brake vans in it, so most of the coaches were brake coaches, primarily because the train split in multiple uh, portions. So you could actually get on the train at Waterloo in the right, hopefully in the right portion, and end up in the right town in the, in the west of England. Portions, you had various ones, went to Barnstable, Ilfracoon, Bude, Padstow, Torrington, uh, all manner of places. So it was first stop Salisbury from Waterloo. So it was normally a merchant navy on the front in later years, would have been a Lord Nelson in its day. And then once they got down to Exeter, they'd swap over for a light Pacific, so a west country like Manston and ultimately why a lot of the West Countries were named after locations that they went to. So, you know, there were Wade Bridge, Padstow, all, all of the sort of abused, all the places that they actually visited. So it was an interesting train and, and um, it gradually broke up. It started out at 13, 14 coaches from Waterloo uh, and gradually as it went further and further west, it started out with this enormous train from Waterloo that would snake out round over Westminster Bridge. And by the time it got to Bude or Padstow, it would probably be a West, West Country class and one or two coaches. So it was literally, you know, still had, in some cases, still had the head, headboard, you know, the grand name on the front of the engine, but in reality, probably one or two coaches uh, was all, all that was left of it by that point. And the really interesting part of it was that when the train returned, there was a, there was a back working back to Waterloo as the train sort of gradually met up, which logistically is quite a complicated set of arrangements because you want to make sure that the, the right bits end up. You can't go until the, portion from Bude arrives or that kind of story and worst of all which was so an interesting thing we used to have here with the Steam Dreams trains when we ran that the train would arrive back at its destination completely the wrong way around so that so that the various portions of it would actually not then be in the right order for going out the next day from Waterloo uh, back west so the train used to go back to Clapham Yard uh, through the washer and then they'd have to literally break the train down coach by coach and reform it in completely the opposite direction and as far as I'm aware, it's the only place I can, I can, I'm aware of where they used to reverse the formation and loose shunt the coaches. So they'd pull the strings on the coaches um, and then loose shunt them down the sidings with a shunter riding in it um, and then reform the train because to do it with vacuum brakes and uh, they'd be there in the best part of a, a day putting it around the right way. So it's quite an interesting train in its day. From its heyday, summer Saturdays, there'd probably be three, four different portions of it with obviously a lot more people travelling one or two coaches wasn't enough. So on a summer Saturday, there'd often be relief portions that would travel. So there'd be four or five coaches to each destination, which then made the train far, far too long to fit at Waterloo. I think eventually it was killed off around about mid 60s, 66, uh, when the Great Western took over the West of England and really the withered arm withered and died. Um, and, and the rot set in and the through trains finished really. The warships took over on the west of England trains around about 66 uh, from the merchant navies and the through traffic really came to an end. So it had been a lot of changing trains for DMUs in the West Country. The term withered arm was a, was a phrase 
known, you know, basically it was a phrase used to talk about the southern railway lines as was southern region in the West Country. So it always very much Great Western Brown Badge territory. Obviously the Southern Railway, the London South Western prior to that, obviously snuck into the West Country. So, so North Cornwall, North Devon uh, was very much Southern Territory, decimated when the Western region took over in the 60s. So it was always in a state of decline and it was often known as the Withered Arm. There was a sort of a withered arm of, of lines that stretched into, into North Devon, North Cornwall. Um, but in reality, with the sort of the, the, the Western region influence from 66 onwards, it was always seen as competition and unfortunately when everything west of Salisbury became Western Region in 66 then the, the writing was on the wall for a lot of the lines to sort of these places and you know so many places like Bude and Padstow and and things like that you know what we'd give to have the railway back there today but uh, no, I'm afraid that's uh, not to be so yeah fa fascinating history you know and, and you know a little bit of the background to when you see the ace headboards um, what went into the logistics of actually getting it to the locations in in the West Country and uh, and get, getting it back again. Mm -hmm.